counting money. Today we'll be adding sets of mixed coins and mixed dollars. For this video I'm going to be using the Money Pieces app, which you can find on your app store or um, you can find the web version on mathlearningcenter.org. First we're going to talk about some strategies for counting sets of mixed coins and dollars. Uh, previously we have been using a hundreds grid in which we are looking at the value of each of the coins and um, representing it with the correct number on the grid. Such as this one with the three dimes filling in a full column, the nickel filling in a half a column, and then the penny filling in one square. Another one would be skip counting. Now with this group of coins, I would start with a quarter, which has the highest value in this certain set. So I'd start with the highest value, 25. I would count the nickel, which is worth five, to be 30. Now the reason why I would do that is because I want to make a 10. 10s are nice, right? That's, they're perfect in math. Then I would continue that skip counting by 10, adding those two dimes. So we were at 30, so then 40, 50, and then count by one to get 51 cents. So that's one way, skip counting. Another strategy would be using a number line which is similar to that skip counting, where I'd start at 25 for the 25 cents, do a jump of 10 for the dime, another jump of 10 for the other dime being 45, and then adding two pennies, one, two for 47 cents. Another way is doing written addition, in which I group them by what other, whatever type of coin they are. So putting my quarters together, two quarters equals 50 cents, one dime of 10 cents, four pennies being four cents, and then I add up all of those partial sums, so 50 plus 10 plus four to equal 64. So written addition. Another way is to do some mental addition, thinking, oh, one dime is 10 cents, and four nickels is 20 cents, so 10 plus 20 equals 30, two pennies is two cents, 30 plus two equals 32 cents. And we can do the same type of thing with bills skip counting it a group of bills, I again would start with the largest value. So here we are starting with 10. Skip counting by fives, so 10, 15, 20, 25, and then we have some ones, so skip counting by ones. 25, 26, 27, so a total of $27 there. We could use a number line, starting with 10, our highest value, doing two, or sorry, three jumps of five, getting to 25, two jumps of one, to be $27. You can do written addition by the different values. For the tens, there's one $10 bill, which is $10. There are three $5 bills, which is $15. There are two $1 bills, which is $2. Adding up all those partial sums, 10 plus 15 plus two is $27. We'd also use the mental addition for the dollar bills. Think how oh, one 10 is 10. Three fives is five plus five plus five equals 15. 10 plus 15 equals 25. Two ones is two, so 25 plus two equals 27. So now, as you have been introduced to those various strategies, I would like you to pick one. Or, you know, try out a couple different ones, see what, which one you like the best. Here I have a set of paper bills, and I would like you to figure out what is the total value of these bills. You can see that there are two $10 bills and three $5 bills. What is the total value here? $35. Now, how did you determine the value? Did you um, count each one? Doing 10, 20, 25, 30, 35 to get that $35? Did you add the two parts and you do, well, 10 plus 10 equals 20. And over here, 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 15. So 20 plus 15 equals 35. Whichever your strategy was, um, as long as you choose one that is efficient and effective for you. Now here we have a set of coins. I want you to determine the value that is shown here. What is the total value of the coins? How did you determine the value of this set? What strategy did you use? A really good strategy that I like to use is to maybe group 
the similar coins first. Get all these ones. These ones are all the same. So I'm gonna group those ones together and then group those two together. Um, so that's a, a good strategy to use. And then also another one would be to start with the larger value coins and then ending with the smaller value coins. So if I add up my larger value coins first, that's my nickels, right? So if I skip count, here we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 cents with the nickels. And then if I add on with my pennies, 20, 21, 22, the total here is 22 cents. Here's another collection of paper bills. It's already grouped for you. There's the tens and the ones. So if we count each one, so we have 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. A total of $14. Here are these ones. Again, we're starting with the larger bills first. So 10, add five to it would be 15, 20, 25. Now we're adding ones, 26, 27 for a total of $27. Here's some coins, and again, we want to kind of separate them by the types. Here's one dime, here we have my nickels, and here we have my pennies. And I want to go with the highest value first, so starting off with my dime, there's 10 cents. Adding to it with my nickels, which are 5 cents each, so 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, then those last two are pennies, We're adding 1, 31, 32, for a total of 32 cents. Here's another one. I'm going to give you a minute to think about this one. If I again separate them by value, here I have quarters, here I have a dime, and over here are my pennies. I want to start with that greater value first, which is the quarters. The quarters are 25 cents, so I have 25, and another 25 equals 50. And if I add my dime, I now have 60, adding the pennies, 61, 62, 63, and 64, being a total of 64 cents. Okay, well, what would this be? This is 47 cents. Give you another one on your own. This is 51 cents. Another one here. 36 cents. All right, so we're going to put that skill that we just learned into a real life situation. So Fred took two quarters, one dime, and three pennies from his coin jar. How much money did he take out of the jar? If we have two quarters, a quarter, and a quarter, one dime, and three pennies. We wanna know how much money he took out of the jar. So remember, a quarter is worth 25 cents, and 25 cents, and a dime is 10 cents, and then a penny, a penny, and a penny, each being one cent. So if I start adding these up together, 25 plus 25 is 50, plus 10 is 60, and plus 1, 61, 62, 63. 63 cents. So again, Fred took two quarters, one dime, and three pennies from his coin jar. How much money did he take out of the jar? He took out 63 cents. Okay, let's try one more. This Tim's mom gave him lunch money for the month. She gave Tim three $5 bills and four $1 bills. How much money does Tim have for lunch? Okay, so again, it was three $5 bills. So one, two, three. Three five dollar bills and four one dollar bills. So one, two, three, four. How much money does Tim have for lunch? On this group, five, ten, fifteen. And this group is four. Fifteen plus four equals nineteen. So how much money does Tim have for lunch? He has nineteen 
dollars.